Hello Fiber friends! I am so excited for today's video because we are going to have a very special guest join us. But first I'd like to tell you just a little background about this topic today, which is sleeping beauty. When I was a little girl, I remember watching the 1959 Disney version of Sleeping Beauty and you know that scene. Suddenly Maleficent appears in the fireplace and the secret door opens and Aurora in a trance follows her up the stairs into this room where a spinning wheel magically appears and she's just absolutely compelled to touch the... the what? Okay, this is where I now have a problem. As a kid, that scene terrified me, but as a spinner, I, I have questions. I have confusion because, let's back this up a little bit and start with the curse that takes place at the beginning of the movie. And that is the part where Maleficent says, before the sun sets on the eve of her 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. Dun dun dun. Okay, so the spindle of a spinning wheel. Now that is a real thing. There is such a thing as a spindle wheel, which would be different than this wheel here. This is a flyer wheel. And also the wheel is going to have a very different shape. It would be a walking wheel or a wool wheel or a high wheel is what they were called. And the drive wheel would be absolutely massive. And yes, those did have a sharp spike on them, a spindle, not a flyer. So possibly that could be the wheel that we need to be referring to here, but let's kind of put a pin in that for a second and finish discussing the Disney version. In the Disney version, Aurora Rose walks in a trance and touches this. And let me just explain why this is not gonna prick anyone's finger. This is called a distaff. It's not sharp. There's absolutely no reason to make this sharp. What it does is hold the fiber while you're spinning and there's just no reason for it to be sharp to function. It just doesn't have to have a sharp point. And the wheel that appears in Maleficent is a spinning wheel shaped object. So I'm not even gonna discuss that because that wheel is a hot mess. At least the 1959 version had a fairly accurate looking flax wheel. So let's come back to this idea of a spindle wheel and look at some of the source material to figure out if maybe that's actually what she should have pricked her finger on. We are doing some old school investigation here because I have books. I have several fairy tale books. I love fairy tales. I love fairy tales. So this well-loved tome here is the complete fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. But it's interesting to note that the Brothers Grimm version does not title the story as Sleeping Beauty. They title the story Briar Rose. What exactly is the wording of the curse in the Brothers Grimm version? In her 15th year, the princess shall prick herself with a spindle and fall down dead. No mention of a spinning wheel. A spindle is something different. I have a couple spindles. Let's look at a spindle and see exactly where she pricked her finger. But there's also nothing on here that's really sharp. Everything has a blunt edge. Let's look at a different style of spindle. This one's a top whorl. Again, nothing sharp. There's a hook on top, but I have this smaller spindle, but again, Nothing is sharp. The sharpest type of spindle that I could find is a supported Russian style spindle. And this one does have a little bit of a tip on it. So my thing is for the most part, spindles aren't that sharp, at least in a finger pricking kind of way. I guess if she's compelled to prick herself, then sure. 
But why would that be a thing? In the time period that this story came from, which is actually older than the Brothers Grimm, by the way, the French author Charles Perrault published a version of the Sleeping Beauty story in 1697. And before him, another version appeared in Italy by the Italian author Giambattista Basile. So how old is this story? It's very old. The very first written Sleeping Beauty version story that we have is from a narrative called The Perciforest, which was published sometime in the 1330s. So the people of the time would have been very familiar with spinning technology because everyone was doing it. And are they really going to choose a spindle to prick a finger on? Was that a common occurrence at the time? I'm still not convinced that she pricked her finger on a spindle. And so to find out definitively, once and for all, what did Sleeping Beauty prick her finger on? I have invited a very special guest to join us today. Magic mirror on the wall, bring me to the Zoom. Hello, Miller's daughter. Welcome to the Jillian Eve channel. I'm so happy to have you here. I really wish we could have done this in person, but I know the plague. I'm just grateful we have this technology so that we're able to do this virtually. Yes, magic mirrors seem to be very common in your kingdom. I tried to get an interview with Aurora herself, but when I talked to the people at her castle, they said that she just wasn't available. Oh yes, she does nap quite frequently. Mm. Right, that makes sense. Mm. So how do you know each other? I married her husband's brother after I spun him three roomfuls of straw into gold. I thought Rumpelstiltskin did that. <laughs> no, fairy tale princesses and queens are not as helpless as your fairy tales would have you believe. So what is the truth of the Sleeping Beauty fairy tale? I just really can't figure out how a spindle would be sharp enough for anyone to prick their finger. Your stories have it all wrong. Queen Aurora did not prick her finger on a spindle at all. If flax is not thoroughly hackled, as you're spinning, it will prick your finger, just like a sliver of wood. On the flax itself. That makes much more sense than pricking your finger on a spindle. It's like I always say, a good yarn starts with good fiber preparation. Thank you so much for clarifying that for us, your majesty. And if I could just ask, how did you spin all of that straw into gold? Could you maybe tell us your secret? Guess my name, and I will tell you how I spun straw into gold. Your name? Well, your name is the miller's da daughter. Fairy tale never mentions your name. I know. Not even Rumpelstiltskin could figure out my name. How many guesses do I get? I'll give you three guesses. I'm traditional that way. Well, thank you so much, Your Majesty, for joining us. Would you please do us the honors of saying farewell? Fare thee well, O oh friends of fiber. I wish you good health and splinter-free spinning. Bye. How does this magic mirror work? There you have it, friends. Indisputable proof from someone who knows that Princess Aurora did not prick her finger on a wheel or a spindle, but on a sliver of the flax itself. My favorite version of this fairy tale happens to be this one because I like it when the princesses turn out to be heroes. All right, friends, thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next tutorial where we will spin some yarn. Happy spinning!
that if she's actually going to prick her finger on spinning related equipment, it's not gonna be a wheel or a distaff or a spindle. It'll be these bad boys.